The following program was funded in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Good evening, I'm Jim Whaley. Tonight it's a pleasure to welcome to Cinema Showcase one of the top stars of television and films, Miss Farrah Fawcett. Her new movie is a romantic adventure comedy called Sunburn. We'll have several scenes from that picture to show you, so stay with me as I talk with Farrah Fawcett tonight on Cinema Showcase. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining Cinema Showcase tonight. And right now, join me in welcoming to Atlanta and to the program, Miss Farrah Fawcett. Farrah, thanks for being here. Thank you. Did I describe um, Sunburn accurately as a romantic adventure comedy? Right. Exactly. What else? Um, what else would you call it? It's a. Um, I think that about sums <laughs> it up. I think um, if I had to describe it to somebody, I would say that it's fun and it's entertaining. I think you leave there in a good mood yeah. because you've just been entertained for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. well, you know, several years ago with the, uh, the advent of films like Julia and mm -hmm. The Turning Point, mm -hmm. they said um, women's pictures are back. Do you think that's, that's held up? Um, I think so. I think that there was a very strong emergence there for a while mm -hmm. and I think now it's, it's settled down. Uh, but what I think it did is I think it just opened up the field for a lot of uh, pictures that probably wouldn't have had the chance to be made because there were, it was a relationship between two women and mm -hmm. about women. Um, so I think that's good. I don't, I don't know if it will now be totally women. I don't think so. You know what I'm yeah, talking sure. about. It's when the women's movement came out and it was, that's all you heard about and now it's kind of leveled off. And I think it's only when things level off like that 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 great things start happening yeah. from it. So. Well, Sunburn definitely is, um, I think we, we, we can't just call it a, woman, a woman's picture, no, but certainly no. the, uh, the whole thing focuses around a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's, that's probably a healthy trend. I think so. Yeah. I, think, um, I think women like it. Yeah. And I don't know, I haven't heard any men complain about <laughs> Sunburn, so, so it's not all bad. When you're up, uh, I know you must get all sorts of script offers. How do you go about mm -hmm. selecting just what... Well, how did you select Sunburn, in fact? Well, uh, it's interesting because the first script that I read, originally we talked about it, uh, was titled The Bind. Mm -hmm. And it was a very serious film. And I liked what was happening with the woman. The, the film was around her, except that she was very serious and the end was sad because he he didn't come through for her. In other words, he disappointed her. Mm -hmm. It was a very heavy, dramatic yeah. film. <laughs> and uh, when we were thinking about who to cast in it, we thought about different people. Somebody came up with the name of Charles Grodin, so then the film takes a whole lot of mm -hmm. twist. And I kind of just went with it. I, I still liked my character when they did the rewrite. And when Charles and I were filming, we, we spent a lot of hours rehearsing uh, and kind of rewriting ourselves, finding what would work best with both characters. But getting back to what I, the reason that I select a film from a script, I think I know what appeals to me is if the film has a relationship between two people. It doesn't have to necessarily be a man or and a woman. It can be two women. It can be a woman and an older man, which happened in in the last script that I just finished, Saturn Three. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it would, I'm looking forward to the day that I can do something, and maybe with a child, you know, a yeah. younger person, yeah. age difference. But I, I look for a relationship, something meaningful in the film. I mean, in other words, I know that, that I work better when I'm dealing with people and I can have a relationship. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you know then right away when a script is sent to you if it's going to be right for you? Or do you, do you trust your own instincts on that? Well, that's hard to answer. I think that as an actress, 
what you hope will happen is that any script you read, you could put yourself in that situation. In other words, for instance, when, as I told you, the bind changed from mm -hmm. very serious to then this kind of kooky character, Ellie, which I played. Uh, I was reading a script the other day, and it was written not too far off from uh, sunburn. In other words, it was light. I had read the script a couple of years ago. They made some rewrites, and now they they changed it and made the, my character much lighter. And I thought, now I would rather play her a little more sarcastic instead of, in other words, playing, delivering the lines with humor, which mm -hmm. was the writer's intention. I thought I'd play her a little more aggressive and maybe a little more sarcastic. So, I don't know, I think it depends on what ca mood that you catch me yeah. in, what phase I'm in. Yeah. But I think as an actor and actress, you read scripts always thinking you could do them because that's, that's what you're supposed to be able to do as yeah. an actress. I think that I've, I'm more comfortable doing lighter roles, comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Saturn Three was a dramatic departure for me, and I feel it's probably the best thing I've done. So I don't know if you're very objective about yourself and if you know what's right for yourself, or even really if I should trust my own instincts, yeah. because what's necessarily the easiest thing for me may not be the best thing. It's better sure. to stretch and grow. Well, that gets into the, into the thing of when you're actually in a film, do you... Uh, after a particular take has been completed, do you uh, do you trust your own instincts to know, gee, that's the best I mm -hmm. can do it, or do you trust your director who says, no, Farrah, you can do it better than that? Um, I find that I I place a lot of faith in my director, um, and sometimes I'm right. We'll go in. What happens at the end is he may say, print take two and take four, and I may say to him, I felt I was more spontaneous and more real and take one. It was the first thing. I find I'm generally better in the first three mm -hmm. takes than I am the 17th take. Yeah. We have to go <laughs> on and on for another actor in the scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'll say, okay, but I think you'll see the difference. So then he'll print it and we'll talk it over if we both go see the rushes. And it's interesting, Some it's about half and half. Sometimes he's right and sometimes I'm right. That could get to be a real problem if you're working with an actor whose style, let's say, is, um, is vastly different because I think that happened once with them. Uh, with, with Marlon Brando and Anna Magnani in a film uh -huh. because he was so good the first few takes, it but is. she kept getting better and better That's the right. 20th and 25th take, and that mm -hmm. drove him crazy. It, in fact, it happened with me. Um, Charles Grodin is that way. Mm -hmm. He likes, he'll say, let's do it again because he's very creative and mm -hmm. sometimes on the spot, so he feels, no, I could add something. When he wants to go on and on, Harvey Keitel and Saturn Three was that way. Yeah. Art Carney, however, is great because he and I go, great, cut, print, okay, <laughs> let's move on, we got it. So you're, you're right, but, but that's the fun about acting, to work with all different kinds of actors yeah. and, and to pick up things from other actors and see what works best for them. It's interesting. I, I was so, uh, one thing that has stayed with me is uh, I did an interview once with Helen Hayes and yeah, just a couple of years ago, and goodness mm -hmm. knows, she has done just about every yes. great role. Yeah. But she says no matter what she does now, she keeps growing. And I oh. think for an actor, you have to, mm -hmm. don't you? I think if you talk to Laurence Olivier, he would yeah. say the same thing. Um, oh, I think that's very true. I feel it. Yeah. For those watching who have not seen uh, Sunburn yet, mm -hmm. I know it's tough to synopsize something, but could you give them just an idea of what to expect when they go see it? Um, well, it's like I said, I think you, you just can expect to be entertained yeah. and have a lot of fun. I think. Uh, for everyone who saw Foul Play. That's how I felt when yeah. I saw Foul Play. I came out of there thinking, oh, it's over. That was fun. Yeah. Great. Had a good time. But you play a sort of uh, yes. innocent who's kind of rooked into a, uh, an yes. escapade. That yes. And, but a lot of funny things happen yeah. to this innocent. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a couple of scenes from the picture. And this first one takes place uh, on an airplane, which I think is your first meeting with, uh, with Charles Grodin. Could you kind of set this scene up? That's right. Well, I've... My character, is, Ellie, is a model who's been hired to go spend a week with this insurance investigator and pose as his wife. Uh, no funny business, as she says. You know, this is my profession. I'm very serious about it. So uh, he doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know who he is. They happen to be sitting next to each other on the plane. They're supposed to meet in Acapulco. Mm -hmm. They're on the same flight. So she's very nervous about flying and happens to spill a drink all over his white pants and we we tried it a couple of times and rehearsed it but I think the the take that they finally used was one where we both 
just kind of ad libbed through the whole <laughs> thing, and he is very funny. Uh, I, I hope that we see it. Are we going to see yeah, it? Yeah, we'll see it. Will I see it? So I could tell you what happened sure. afterwards. Okay, so. let's take a look at that right now. Here's a scene from Sunburn. flying, don't you? Hasn't been too bumpy, though, has it? Would you care for another cocktail? I'll have another cream with cocoa. Thank you. Certainly. Have you ever tried it? The cream de cocoa? No. You should. It's really good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Oh, I'll have yes, nuts. No, only one. Here. Would you like? Oh, 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 oh gosh. I'm. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I'm Boy, so, oh, that's, no, that's I'm. Really, that's what, again. That's that's okay. I, yeah, that just doesn't really. I'm sorry. Show on what? Sorry. Excuse me. A big stain. It is. Isn't it? Oh, are you going to leave it that way? Oh, I'm really sorry. Ah. That's all right. Really, mm. that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. A scene from Sunburn starring Farrah Fawcett and Charles Grodin. I think that's pretty much what you described. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I wanted to tell you was uh, that we have certain lines written. Everyone knows that. Uh, but a, a, a line that he added was, that's OK. It doesn't really show on white, which is the funniest thing, because mm -hmm. it's brown, and his <laughs> pants are white, and it's an enormous stain. And then uh, he was supposed to come back and sit down, and I was just supposed to say, I'm sorry. But they kept the camera rolling. And I started laughing hysterically, because what you uh, Charles Grodin can say more with a look yeah. than most people can with a, a whole page of dialogue. <laughs> and so he, the look that he gave me just made me keep laughing hysterically. And I couldn't really say, I am so sorry. I just kept <laughs> laughing. And so they left it in. That's but great. those things work sometimes. That's great. I was going to ask you, when you, when you mention ad-libbing, do, um, mm -hmm. do you like to have that sort of freedom on a film or a, or a TV show? Or do you, like, do you like lots of direction? Do you like the director to say, now, in this scene, I want you to do exactly this? Well, again, I have to say, I want it all. I, want, mm -hmm. I would like to work with a very rigid director, someone who, who, in my opinion, is so well prepared that he knows the look of the film, the feel of the film. I, I don't think most directors do. I mm -hmm. think they come in as actors and actresses where you know what you want to do with your character, but then what happens is enter what the other actor does with his character development. You have no control over the whole look of the film. I mean, there's a cinematographer, sure. there's the lighting. So uh, I would think that Stanley Kubrick, for example, probably has so much control and knows exactly what he wants that I would love to work with someone that way mm -hmm. who has total control, would therefore know exactly what he wanted from me as an yeah. actress. But on the other hand, I, I would say I, I like the freedom of being able to do what I want, and I think the more relaxed I am, the more freedom I have, the more good things that happen. Yeah. I was talking with uh, Gene Wilder, for example, mentioned that he cannot work on a set that's mm -hmm. tense. Mm -hmm. Do you find that uh, to be any kind of hindrance? Oh, I, well, personally, it's not as much fun. Yeah. And when, when things are tense, I mean, ugly things come out of people. I mean, everybody is very nervous and they're worried about the schedule and if somebody yells, then somebody else yells. And it's just the whole feeling permeates around you. So it's, it's not as much fun. Um, and I think it goes back to, I think people don't get as relaxed, so therefore their performance is a little more rigid yeah. and controlled and not as spontaneous. But I've never worked on a really tense set, so... I don't know. It, it, it amazes me how um, how actors and actresses could work on a picture for a director who um, screams and yells at them. Mm -hmm. That that amazes oh, me. I think that I get uncomfortable when somebody screams, say at at the wardrobe lady or the wardrobe yeah. man because there's a problem with the wardrobe. I just think, oh, 
everyone realizes the importance here, but, but sometimes you can't help it. I yeah. mean, everybody's on, on such a time schedule that you get very nervous, but I get uncomfortable personally yeah. when people are screaming. But I guess when you're working on a project that's costing eight or ten million dollars or whatever they're going to be um, That's always days. the tension and the pressure that you're yeah. under, yes. That's always in the back of everyone's mind, money. <laughs> uh, you filmed uh, Sunburn and I think one of the most gorgeous places, Acapulco. Mm -hmm. um, was it, a, was it a fun place to shoot in, or, or was it, uh, it, looked, it looked hot, but yet it looked beautiful. It, it was <laughs> extremely warm. Uh, it was beautiful. I think that everybody was very relaxed for that reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look out, and there's sunshine, and there's the ocean, and it, so everybody walks in in a good mood, starting yeah. from 5.30 in the morning. Uh, but there are problems when it looks that way, and especially Art Carney, who uh, was perspiring so heavily that finally the director said, Let's just make that your character, right? I mean, your, your, your shirt right. is always wet and sticking to you, and let's go with it, because you can't stop and dry his wardrobe every three minutes. Yeah. There were a couple of scenes where perspiration was just dripping all down our cheeks, and you're so hot, you think, I know this can't look good, but <laughs> you just deal with it. Art Carney is, is to me, a remarkable actor. He, um, not, aside from being a very, a very nice man, I've had the, mm -hmm. the pleasure of talking with him a couple of times, but I think a very, very gifted actor who's... Um, whose dramatic talents I don't think have been as fully tapped as they, even though he won an Oscar for, for Harry right. and Tonto, but mm -hmm. uh, I think he could do so much more. I think he could too. I, I think he's wonderful. I think there's, there's so much that he gives you as an actress, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just when you play scenes with him. And I get that feeling too. I think that when you, when you meet someone, I think people get that feeling from me, when you meet somebody who's, whose image and reputation is they're always up and they're mm -hmm. into comedy, when you sit down and you talk to them and you see a serious side of them, that's what I would love to see him do, something very dramatic yeah. and serious. Yeah. We're going to get to take a look at a little of that, um, that Acapulco scenery in this next clip, which I think takes mm -hmm. place on the beach mm -hmm. and shows us a little of the, um, the action, the adventure in the picture. What do we need to know about this one? Uh, I have just been in um, the water and somebody tried to drown me. So Charles Grodin meets me at the beach, I'm out of breath, and, and I think this scene starts where he picks us up walking down the beach and he's saying, look, you know you're down here just to be my wife, I mean, you're not supposed to be trying to solve the case mm -hmm. and this can get you into trouble, I'll take care of it, which is his character, and yeah. I'll be the strong one. And meanwhile, I say to him, that's the guy who did it, and he goes, I'll talk to him, and I don't want him to because, I mean, look at Charles, he's so <laughs> kind of sweet, and he's mumbling and stumbling and fumbling, and so, and I realize that this guy's a big guy. Yeah. So he goes over being very aggressive, and I think that now you should see the clip. That's right. just what happens. Fine. Before. Let's take a look at another scene right now from Sunburn. Say you didn't want to bug a phone. I end up not wanting you to bug a phone. I sure don't want you swimming out to any yacht looking for letters. Really. I mean, you're being too adventurous. I know you're trying to help, but you're going to get hurt. Jay, I didn't bring Jay, you down here him. to get her. Who? The man. That big guy there. Yes. Wait a minute, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, wait, no, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, just for a second. How you doing? Yeah. What can I do for you, pal? Oh, my wife tells me you, you gave her a little scare out in the water. She's daydreaming, pal. Lots of broads would like me to give them a little scare in the water. Yeah, I'll bet they do. Yeah. Is really the guy? Well, I, I thought it was, but, uh, maybe he just thought I was somebody else. Come on, let's go. Oh, let's excuse us, probably thought you were somebody else. Oh, yeah, thought you were somebody else. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he take off? Yeah. Oh, come on, let's just go. Where'd he take off? Big guy. Oh. Must have got scared. Big guy, huh? Must have really hit him. Yeah, I used to box, not professionally, yeah, amateur, but I never lost a fight. I really took a shot. Another scene from Sunburn featuring Farrah Fawcett and Charles Grodin. That man has a great dry wit. No, oh, doesn't he? he <laughs> it's very difficult to do scenes with him without cracking up because uh. he's, he's so funny. <laughs> uh, that's the kind of thing I was talking about. I think that's very representative of the film. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles Grodin, who's trying very hard to solve this case and who every time he opens his mouth just messes up something and 
the thing with the fight. And he does a later scene where he talks about how he almost had him and wasn't he great and he used to box. Yeah. And, well, it, just, it gets funnier. What do you, uh, when, when someone comes to you and asks you, do you advise them to, um, if they want to get into films or television or whatever, what kind of advice do you give them? Because I, th I think I read somewhere that unemployment among actor actors is still something like 80 five percent or something. Do you advise people to get into the business? Is it an easy business to uh, to stay in? I, no, I don't think it's an easy business, but then it, you know, now that I find I'm in another business, in other words, I have a Farrah Fawcett shampoo and conditioner for Fabergé, and so I'm seeing another business, I've decided that the business is not easy, any business yeah. you're in, and I think if you if you, everybody wants to be the best at what they do, and there's very tough competition. Uh, my advice to people when they say that is just be aware that it's not easy and that it's not all glamour and mm -hmm. limousines and fun. In fact, that's a very small part of it. And I think if you, as a person, can keep your head on straight and realize that it is a business that you have to be just as disciplined in this as you do in any other business, you mm -hmm. have to get your sleep and. You have to perfect your craft, and, and you're constantly learning and growing, and try to remember all this and be yourself. I, I find that when I meet someone I admire in this particular business, that they are themselves. In other words, I, I respect them more when I see them dealing with people in an everyday life, and then acting, and then on screen. Mm -hmm. I, I don't particularly like to see people, it makes me uncomfortable, people who are one thing to one yeah. person and one thing to another, and that happens with a lot of actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. But it works for them. I mean, this is just my own particular opinion and, and yeah. my advice. I mean, you talk to a lot of people and they have to change. They have to get up for crowds, especially, I think, musicians and singers, you know, mm -hmm. they, they become a different person. But you don't think um, acting requires any more diligence than, than any other uh, profession? Well, no, no, I think it does. I think that along with the discipline that you have to put in your 14-hour work day, mm -hmm. I think then you have to be disciplined in the rest of your life. I mean, maybe you have to watch what you eat and what you drink and how much sleep you get. I think that in other businesses you probably could be a little hungover and, and fake it. I, mm -hmm. I don't think you can in front of the camera. Yeah. So that puts an added pressure. Yeah. Let me ask you what, um, you made your film debut, I know, in um, in Myra Breckenridge. Mm -hmm. I like uh, to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I still think that film was maybe a couple of years ahead of its time. Oh, I, I think so. Uh, perhaps 20 years ago. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I talk to people occasionally who, who liked the film, and, but there's, a, there's that very small percentage of people that, in other words, like cult films, mm -hmm. films that are ahead of their time, yeah. things that, that are dealing with things that are not as current, in other words, that are a couple of years ahead, like yeah. you said. Um, I found that with Somebody Killed Her Husband. There were some people, and I found them to be a more intellectual group that mm -hmm. would say, I liked the film, I liked the um, uh, classical music played in the right. background, and I recognized that. And it, But you know, it, I think with Sunburn, we're hitting more of a mass market, things mm -hmm. that, that most people can identify with. I think when you get into these other select films, you that's what happens. The, the critics maybe pan it and not as many people see it and only yeah. a small group like it. Well, what do you think about with, uh, with Saturn 3? Saturn 3, I think, will be more successful than Somebody Killed Her Husband. I don't know about Sunburn mm -hmm. because, you know, that's yet to be proven. Sure. But, no, I think that will appear, appeal to a more mass audience. Yeah. What do you follow that with? Um, well, when I leave here, I will go back to Los Angeles, hopefully, and be able to rest for about <laughs> a week and a half. September the 1st, I go to Israel to promote Farrah Fawcett Shampoo and mm -hmm. Conditioner. I'll be there for about 10 days. And then I'll go back and do a Charlie's Angels. And then I start another film in October, mm -hmm. October the 15th, called Other Strictly than that, Business. You're, you're not busy. Other than, <laughs> then after that, I do another Charlie's Angels. And other than that, I'll be resting, uh, relaxing. You know, typical yeah. life of a movie star. Yes. You're talking about the glamour. I mean, I don't think there's anything glamorous about getting up at, uh, at 5 or 5.30. No. Uh, I get up about 4.30, really? quarter of 5. Mm -hmm, because I, I'm, I wake up slowly. I know that Lee 
uh, can wake up, hits the alarm, jumps out of bed, and feels terrific. <laughs> I'm, I'm the other way around. About mm -hmm. 9 or 10 o'clock at night, I come alive. I'm <laughs> feeling good. <laughs> so it's, it's difficult for well, me. Maybe you should consider then going on the stage, because that's, that's an evening type, uh, right. type acting thing. Yeah. Oh, gee. Do you find that uh, when, you, when you go around promoting films, do you, do you get a chance to see much of the... Um, the places you go to, or is it just really a hectic sort of schedule? No, it's, I was mentioning to somebody the other day, when they say, how do you like the city, how do you like yeah. Chicago, I, I saw Chicago from the 22nd floor, and I saw the drive to and from the airport, that's not very representative no. of the city, the same thing with Atlanta, but uh, this afternoon I am going out to the Atlanta Falcons training camp, right. you know, the complex yeah. there, um, my husband and I actually own a part of that. We were with the corporation that built it and mm -hmm. Rankin and Charlotte Smith are good friends of ours so Great. I am going to get to see some of Atlanta. Fantastic. <laughs> We've only got about a minute left. Let me ask you something about uh, the very very famous uh, Farrah Fawcett poster. When that was done, did you have any idea it, was be, it would be that incredibly successful? Oh no. In fact when they wanted me to, when they approached me about doing the poster they said these this is what you have to do. You have to be in a bikini and we want a very sexy shot and they gave me all these limitations mm -hmm. and I thought and directions I thought I can't do that I'll just do it the way I want and yeah. if they like it fine if they don't it doesn't matter to me so I did it as you know in a one-piece bathing suit mm -hmm. and what I consider not really sexy I mean I was smiling and leaning back having a good time but um, so that when it did catch on I still don't know why no I I'm think we could surprised. safely call it sexy I, I think we I think could so. yeah <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, it is successful, though. Yeah, Farrah, I want to thank you so much for coming by. It's been a pleasure uh, thank you. talking with you. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Great. And come back to Atlanta and see us. I will. I will. Thank, thank you. you. My thanks to all of you for watching. Until next time, good night. Hello, I'm Jim Whaley, and I hope you will join me this week on Cinema Showcase as I welcome to the program one of today's top television and film stars, Miss Farrah Fawcett. Her new film is called Sunburn, and we'll see several scenes from that picture. So join me this week as I talk with Farrah Fawcett on Cinema Showcase. <laughs>